merge tomorrow. We have to, we have the countdown actually. I will show you the countdown link later. And then uh, in the last session, we'll talk about some uh, takeaway for the diesel blockchain. Uh, we already mentioned a few things about diesel last week, and uh, we'd like to uh, dive a little bit deeper this time. So hopefully you'll learn something today about diesel special uh, functions. And let's get started. Um, so uh, let's have uh let's have dave talk about yesterday's cpi news because a lot of volatility last uh, yesterday and and you know market just reacted uh quickly and that was a dump what do you think about it dave yeah bro so um i think like um i think we we really have to pay attention to jane crane you know yeah. so like whatever you, you hear about jane crane just you know reverse it just reverse it, you know. So like, um, you know, Jim Kramer, you know, yesterday he said that, you know, we have a bomb in June. Then dumb, you know. So uh, basically, what happened like yesterday is basically like uh, the U.S. you know August consumer prices, you know, um, have ha has a consensus that you know the analysts have a consensus, have an expectation of negative open one percent. But the results turned out to be, you know, a positive, you know, open one percent. Basically, means that you know the consumer prices are going to skyrocket, skyrocket. You know, this is not going to be good for risky asset. And then we have another, you know, another another trouble like the CPI for X food and energy. You know, we have a consensus of plus zero point three percent, but it turned out to be, you know, plus zero point six percent, a double. From the consensus, you know, so this is this is very you know, very bad, for, and it's you know it's very like um far from expectation, and also we tend to see a core CPI up, you know, six point three percent, you know, year over year, and that's basically we we're pricing in we priced in, you know, the seventy five you know a business point hike for you know a September, then we are you know having a question that if the market is going to price in. For the next, you know, twenty-five basis point that basically add up to, um, you know, like not one hundred basis point. So basically, um, what what we you know, you know, ha what we we see for the market is like, uh, the market reacts to the um, you know, over expectation or far from the expectation or or consensus or the market that we have a worse you know data reflection or data from the you know reality. So um the market you know just you know punch off you know so before you punch off we can all, always see that or we usually see that um there is a you know a reverse indicator for the uh, retails basically we always we saw that or we heard that um a lot of people were talking about CPI pump CPI pump you know so basically uh the results usually turned out to be the um opposite so um basically. Um, we have to keep an eye on the market. So right now, today we also have a you know, new new re release for the um, you know uh, PPI. So uh, the question here is like um, we have the um, uh, PPI data for the core PPI, you know, month over month. Uh, we basically have a uh, um, you know a forecast of zero point three percent, and now it turned up you know zero point four percent is zero one percent up. You know, from the forecast or consensus, then we have a year over year, you know, up for you know a seventy seven point three percent, and previously we had a seven point seven percent. Although we are uh, having seen a downtrend of the um, you know, core PPI year over year, but we had a forecast of seven point one percent. So we're basically, you know, zero point two percent higher than our forecast or consensus. This is literally, you know, not not a good news for the market. But you know, uh, basically, we saw that uh, we reacted, you know, heavily for the CPI. So when the PPI data came out, you know, just now, X thirty, basically, we do not have a um sort of like a overreaction like yesterday. So what do you think about that, uh, Johnny? Huh, you just. I, I just want to respond to your 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 Jim Kramer inverse Jim Kramer joke. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I I I think we talked about it yesterday, right? Jim Kramer mentioned that uh that they 
the tech stocks are near the bottom, right? He he just said that, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, and dumb. Yeah, dumb. Yeah. They're definitely not looking good for tech stocks like Tesla, and also I think Eve is one of them. So, uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> CPI is you no know, reflecting that inflation is still high, and uh, we are expecting a straight financial measures you know by the fed and you know 75 basis point at least um uh, we don't know if, if they are going to do a, a 100 basis point or not we have to wait until they release the the news later next month probably and uh yesterday just right at you know let, let's look at yesterday's yesterday's reaction right so we have 15 minutes chart here and yesterday oh cool 8:30 shop at 830 where we had a straight down from um 750 to <laughs> just 1.5k right and that's a huge dump for a huge dump it's like 10 percent dump cool and as for bitcoin we also had a you know drop here as well and you know we were trading at uh 22k 22.5k and then now we're trading at 20.3k that's a huge dump as well but i want you to notice i want you to notice one thing that um actually if was actually trading at the 0 0.618 fibonacci level if we take a retracement from the top we have in 2k and then to the bottom here and then you no know, just you know, coincide, coincides, co coincides with the previous highs and also, also zero point six one eight Fibonacci level, and that's you know just a major resistance point to look out for. And then now it's consolidating right in um sixteen hundred, and now trading in the trading range, I think, probably. And because tomorrow we have the Eve merge, I want to show you something. Here, actually, you can just go to the Binance website and. You know, look for the Eve Ethereum merge countdown here. Uh, we have 15 hours left, 15 hours and 25 minutes left, and that's one thing that we have to be, you know, pay attention to. And then uh, let's get back to, um, yeah. And I also want to want to you know update you about the indicator me and Dave uh, made, you know, last month. We created a you know correlation chart between Bitcoin and also inverted RLP. Remember what reverse repo is? Um, reverse repo is actually a, a a financial tool used by the Federal Reserve to absorb, or you can you, can, you think this way, to uh, to take liquidity out of the market, and the Fed is absorbing liquidity from the market by you know introducing more uh, reverse repo. And by inverting the reverse repo, the total number of reverse repo will have the uh, inverse uh, inverse line here. And we are seeing that this inverted RLP reverse repo is actually, you know, uh, having a very close relationship with Bitcoin even till now. And um, the relationship between inverted RLP with Ethereum, uh, Nasdaq, and also SPX uh, is no longer valid. So. Right now, big, uh, the only correlation between reverse repo with is, is just Bitcoin. So we can think like that. Um, so uh, it's also reasonable to think that if reverse repo is going to stay flat and we, we ain't see um, any much uh, downside on Bitcoin, um, provided that you know the reverse repo is actually a leading indicator to forecast the liquidity flow in the market, especially it had it had it had you know a uh, significant uh impact on bitcoin for you know the last few the last uh, the last year right from you know we, we're already seeing a very close correlation since december of 2021 so uh make sure uh, if you want to learn more about the uh, the reverse repo thing and then you can go to hobby research and just look for the article we have an we have uh, published an article talking about using uh, reverse repo to you know to understand and to and to see the correlation between price of Bitcoin and reverse repo and yeah and here we have uh, this one this chart we take the seven days as I may and this one is actually not moving so you can see uh, they are very closely correlated yeah 
So uh, right now, I um, want to actually want to cover some things about the Ethereum merge, and we already talked about uh, that a, a few few episodes before. But you know, some, maybe there are some new audience here, and let's cover that. So uh, I think we are going to uh, you know just uh, debunk some myths here. Uh, all credits to uh, CoinSmart. This is taken from CoinSmart. They, are, they made a very clear conclusion here. So we are just, you know, discussing and uh, discussing about a, the, the points and also the conclusion that provided by the CoinSmart. And yeah, let's go for it. Uh, the Ethereum merge will, you know, I just I, so, I just show you the, the, the countdown here. It will happen 15 hours later in 20 minutes. And then what we're expecting Let's let's think. Uh, a lot of people have some, uh, you know, confusions. Like, uh, what what uh, we we already know what the Ethereum merge is. It's actually the transition from the existing proof of work to um, the al algorithm of proof of stake, right? So, uh, what it means is that um, uh, it's actually a different kind of validation. So, uh, the miners shift to validators. So, uh, less energy. Uh, and also more uh, efficient, and that we'll cover later. So first thing, um, the f the myth, the first myth is that the merge will make Ethereum faster. <laughs> uh, actually, the myth is not going to make Ethereum faster because it's actually preparing for uh, further updates and uh, later on, for example, uh, sharding and also some uh, layer one scalability techniques. So. Uh, the merge will actually, actually, the merge will not make Ethereum faster. It just sets stage for future updates, and that makes sense, right? And second thing is that the merge will reduce gas fees, and um, the proof of stake will not make Ethereum cheaper to use, because uh, the the thing that uh, gas fee in Ethereum is that um, uh, it depends on the demand, right? So uh, when we have a lot of people using uh, Ethereum chain to to, to do transactions, for example, a lot of people are doing transactions on 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 tokens deployed on the Ethereum chain, and then we are seeing some uh, uh, network congestion before, and then and then the price uh, and then the gas fee just went up, and we pay a lot. Pay, uh, we are paying a lot of gas fees for for doing the transaction, right? And and that's actually not not the truth, right? Because um, actually it depends on the network demand, right? And if the demand is great. And then we are going to see more people uh, using uh, doing transactions, and the gas fee will go up, right? So if demand is not is not that great, and then the gas fee will probably go down, and the the, the merge will actually uh, not directly reducing gas fee. So yeah, what do you think about this, Dave? I think. Um... I think you make make a very great point on these you know questions and you know so um I think the you know gas reduction also depends on the demand. That's a great point. A great point that um I think I think um I think it's questionable or is a is a issue or is a you know a a topic to talk about if um you know how much demand or how much increase or decrease of demand and how much supply or how much you know supply to cater that the amount of transaction you know to reduce or increase gas fees so like um to my standpoint i think that um you know the demand is is basically like transaction or transaction per second what do you call it about so like um um i think the supply is basically uh you know pre previously we have the minus proof of work so um now we have ETH two point oh we have validators and you know um you know thirty two ETH stake to become the validators and the validators is going to um you know cater the demand that's basically transaction demand on the um you know ETH network. So basically I think you know the validators can process you know more um you know like uh um transaction or data or stuff, you know, than the miners because um, you know, we are doing a parallel, you know, uh, transaction processing and also with the bigger chain, you know, um, you know, so I think validators with a bigger chain design and you know, are going to, are going to, you know, uh, cater the, the amount of, you know, transactions. So I think, um, you know, with more, 
in the supply or more you know power to carry the demand, I think the gas fees are going to be reduced you know compared to now. So, um, but but like uh, the extent of you know the gas fee reduction, I think it's you know it still depends how the market is or how the network is going to perform. So, uh, what do you think about that, John? Yeah, it actually depends on you know how, uh, uh, the the actual demand, right? Because uh, more people using it, and then we have seen gas fee go up. And you know, I I want also want to point out one thing about you know people are talking about. The merge will make Ethereum deflationary. So uh, there is actually a saying that uh, you know it, it's getting deflationary. It's true because they are going to burn. Uh, they are going to lock E from circulation, and 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 from uh, at this standpoint, we can think that uh, it makes Ethereum more deflationary. But uh, you know, um, but before the reality is that Ethereum is already deflationary because of the EIP one five five nine update. Which burns a portion of the gas fees. So what people are saying that the merge will actually lock away Ethereum from circulation and are making it more deflationary. So uh, people are bullish on this point. So uh, it's it's reasonable. It's understandable. Yeah, I, I I agree with this one. And also the merge will increase Ethereum's price. A lot of people are speculating and also thinking where the ETH will you know skyrocket and you know. Maybe go to twenty, you know, two K later on next week after the merge. But you know, personally, um, I think it ultimately goes down to supply and demand, right? Because um, let's think, let's think about it. Um, uh, there are a lot of people uh, speculating on Eve's price, but we also have to, you know, um, be real realistic, right? Because yesterday we just had um, a bad news uh, about the market. Because the PPI, uh, the CPI was you know uh, was out of expectation. It was high, and then we are expecting more, uh, more rate hikes in the coming months, and that's actually a bearish case. But uh, you can think that yesterday we already priced in you know the the, the bearish news. But um, uh, let's think about it uh, that. Um, the, the supply is actually going to, uh, is, has already increased because due to the, you know, the various case, people are not going to, some people are not, are, are not bullish on equities. They're going to cash out. They're selling the ETH. And on the other side, there are people who are bullish on Ethereum merge. And they are, are they going to buy more ETH or are they just going to hold the ETH? And when price does not go into that way, what they expect and then, what do they do? Will they will they hold the coins or they will they dump? Will they dump? We don't know, right? So uh, speculation is not a very good thing that we should do. But we should you know trade or uh, whenever we trade, we should be down to earth and also be, I would say, be objective. Don't um, don't think too biased. And yeah, so uh, basically we just you know cover. Uh, a few things here, and then <coughs> another thing that I want to talk about is that uh, the deflationary stuff. I I just missed it, right? Because uh, you know, the Kraken just will uh, the Kraken Intelligence released a report uh, a few days ago. Um, I actually mentioned that uh, they have uh, Ethereum has a threshold base fee rate. Which Ethereum issues becomes deflationary post merge. So after the merge, so uh, given four hundred and uh, four hundred and eighteen around validators, a base fee greater than fifteen point four nine ray would make ETH deflationary. So we could see uh, from the from the picture right hand side. So if we have uh, the base fee less than fifteen point four three ray. And then the ETH net issuing is inflation. So what that means is that if we have less validators, and then we are going to be inflation. If we have uh, more validators out there, and then it's gonna be deflationary. So that's another thing that we have to, you know, just um, pay some attention to, right? So um, moving on, we are, you know. Talking, we are, we are discussing. I am discussing uh, the uh, decentralized social network with Dave because uh, in the last episode we explained what Diesel is, 
uh, so remember, uh, Bezo is the first and only uh, layer one infrastructure, which uh, uh, which wants to provide a you know just an ecosystem, which wants to build an ecosystem for uh, for a social network. So uh, in the last episode, we talked about uh, different kinds of apps built on uh, Bezo network. For example, uh, the Entree. That one is the lengthy version of uh, Bezo. Uh, if you if you <laughs> if you forget it, we can just you know just you know get back to it. Um, yeah. In the last episode, me and Dave and also Benz, you know, talk about different apps built on a point uh, the Bezo network. And this thing, remember that is is Entry. It's a LinkedIn version, an application built on Eve, which uh, uh, which includes incorporates a wallet, you know, uh, uh, run be uh, run on the diesel chain, and then they have some other um some other applications as well. Yes, um, they have link. Uh, they have Twitter version of uh, uh you know, they have the Twitter Twitter version on the diesel, and also they have online store, you know, stuff like that. And then, but today we are you know focusing on another important thing that diesel. Is offering for you know, uh, for us to you know to push forward to the web three development. So, um, I'm going to explain two concepts here. Uh, first of all, uh, the diesel network actually wants to solve the problem that um, a lot of the de developers out there are, are familiar with you know JavaScript, Python, other uh, programming languages, but they are not familiar with smart contracts languages, for example, Solidity and Rust. So uh, we are actually having a lot of talents out there, a lot of really good good programmers, and we have a lot of fast, fast, fantastic applications, and also we have a lot of projects out there building up on you know, Web 2.0. And then uh, it's, it's actually difficult for them to move on, to migrate to you know building on Web 3, using smart contracts. And from scratch, I mean, it's actually difficult because they have to learn again, learn uh, from scratch about how Rust uh, and also Solidity works. They have to um, build upon a new language, a new programming language. And that's, I think, it's actually a barrier for most of the developers out there. So Diesel wants to solve this problem. Diesel wants to make it efficient and also um, they want to eliminate this barrier in the other words. So how would they do? They are actually offering a smart surface. A smart surface is actually um, uh, another functionality which actually achieve uh, the same function that smart contract give you, but only using Web2 APIs and JavaScript or Python. So. Uh, we we know that a lot of you know developers from uh, Web two millions of developers are already familiar with JavaScript and Python, and they are actually going to they can actually use these like uh, programming languages to build their projects on these two like uh, on on their on the program language they are familiar with. So they don't need to use they don't need to learn solidity they don't need to use Rust and um, you know, building from scratch, and that's actually difficult for them to start upon. And so, uh, what smart services is actually Diesel offers a uh, their own blockchain offers some triggers, which can be incorporated into the Node JavaScript server, which can be used by the Web two developers to call this function and to trigger transactions. Um, from different chains, for example, Ethereum chain, Diesel chain, and Bitcoin, that kind of stuff. So, actually, it's, I think it's a huge, um, it's a huge thing that they are they are trying to accomplish here. Uh, I, I think it's definitely a good thing by removing this barrier. Um, we are encouraging more people to step into the ecosystem of Web three, and yeah, that's the first thing that I want to you know discuss with Dave. You. What do you think about it, Dave? You think it's a good thing, or you have other opinions about that? I think I think it's very important. I think you made a very great point 
that uh, I think it's very important to you know, attract more you know, users. So like uh, back to like web to you know investment model. So basically, we have the um, you know, discount on cash flow and also the you know EP to um, sales multiple. That's basically the uh, enterprise rel to um you know sales multiple. That basically you know to be simple, although to explain simply, you know uh, in a simple term, it's basically uh you know referring to which um you know more uses or it means more demand. You know more demand is going to drive up you know the well of that company, that web two company, or or the you know SaaS, you know SaaS, and that is going to you know drop the uh, capital or or the um you know the value of the market or, or the company. So basically, if we have you know we have the ability to attract more users, we are going to have you know three pillars to increase the capital. Basically, the first is like um the user acquisition, second is the user retention, and the third is basically like um you know scale scalability. Of you know the you know the current you know consumer base you know so that uh if they think you know diesel is a very valuable you know protocol or decentralized social networking app they are going to you know implement their network effects that basically means that they're going to do more free marketing you know to their friends their their you know coworkers colleagues you know and increase the network of that you no know, um you know diesel. You know, social networking effect. So uh, I think it's very, it's very great that um, you know, Diesel is going to attract you know a lot of you web know, to users. So basically, all my you know developer friends, they basically have a you know hamper. They have a hard time understanding solidly, understanding you know rapid rest, understanding you know a lot of like you know rapid concepts. So basically, you know, even like near. Yeah, it's a you know a a a you know infrastructure layer one that basically uses Rust to develop, but like web to web to use uh having you know problems with you know dealing with you know smart contracts with Rust on near. So basically, they are doing uh, like uh web two point zero or or web two point five in the wallet near wallet. So basically, like you know if you have the um your Golang or or the you know, JavaScript, Java, you know, and Python stuff, you can use that language to code with the um, you know, near wallet. So, uh, so the, uh, you know, the web free, you know, back end of the near wallet is going to, you know, you know be work with, you know, the web free counterparties. So basically it attracts a lot of web to put people, you know, so, you know, increase the customer base and more developer confidence. And basically, I think, you know, this is a very great point. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, by, you know, introducing more developers and, and uh, we have more builders, right? With more builders and then we can drive uh, the growth of this ecosystem. And, you know, we all, we, we, I think we all know that, you know, uh, social media is, uh, has become a very important thing about our daily lives. We all need to socialize. Uh, we play, you know, we play with friends. On, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, we connect with friends, right? So what uh, Diesel is now trying to achieve is to break the barrier. Um, they are trying to make this thing a, a, a killer app, I would say, a killer app. One killer app, and then a lot of developers can start building on top of this chain and then making Web3 coming into our daily lives sooner. I, I'm actually... Um, optimistic about this uh, project and what uh, smart services uh, offer is actually you know I, I would like to elaborate on this term a little bit more so I just mentioned that smart service actually uh, does the same thing as smart contracts but it's actually more accessible to millions of web2 developers so that you know some web2 developers don't know uh, some uh, Rust and also Solidity be uh, languages that they can actually use uh, diesel to, to build upon it. And then it's also composable across all chains. So not just only Ethereum, but also uh, even chains that don't support smart contracts um, like Bitcoin. And also it's actually, com uh, it's actually composable with centralized Web2 applications. It's actually, you know, it can be incorporated uh, by some Web2 applications. So Originally existing web two applications can actually incorporate uh, smart services and they just embrace this new function. It's actually simple to understand conceptually. 
And these are things that um, smart services outperform smart contracts on developer uh, accessibility, interoperability, composability, and scalability at the expense of centralization. And they think that this makes smart service much more appealing to developers, which makes it highly likely that the killer app will start to build on smart services going forward rather than smart contracts. So uh, what they are saying is that um, they are actually uh, very confident that um, the smart services are going to outperform uh, smart contracts because it's easily accessible, it's inter interoperable, composable, and also scalable. And I don't know four four important things at the same time. They have these characteristics, and also they can you know appeal. They are they are more appealing to to a web two developers, and and that's why they are so confident on you know pushing the development of smart services. And once this starts to happen, they believe that blockchains will be used predominantly to store assets and content, with computation moving off chain into smart services. So, I think um it's interesting because <clears throat> uh, they also have an interesting thing about uh uh. Uh, interesting concept that general purpose blockchains are actually awesome at DeFi, but scaling beyond DeFi will require new architectures. So what it means is that, um, uh, let's think about uh, general purpose blockchains. So like Ethereum, Solana, uh, Avalanche, um, <clears throat> some chains like that. So we can think about DeFi as an example. So in DeFi, a lot of DeFi protocols are actually built on Ethereum chain, right? Ethereum network. So they are using Ethereum as the layer one infrastructure, and then they are building their financial application on upcoin the Ethereum layer. And then let's think about Ar Aave, right? A V Aave, the lending protocol, right? It's actually allow uh, Aave actually allows borrowing and lending services across you know the crypto community. A lot of people are using Aave for for whatever purpose they want. They can you know take out loans from Aave, or they can just uh, land our loans and earn rewards on Aave, and it's actually useful as a protocol, a useful protocol. But we need to consider the nature of transactions uh, being 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 deployed in Aave, because in in AV, uh, the transactions are actually um, uh, uh, they they would say the transactions are are neutral. What they mean is that. Um, um, it's actually uh, uh, they 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 would like to explain it in this way. So first of all, um, there is difference between uh DeFi transaction, uh, because we, uh as opposed uh de there's a deep, big difference between DeFi transactions with uh social transactions. So I would define social transactions as maybe giving a like or maybe you post something on social media and then. Uh, you 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 scroll uh, you scroll through something and then you saved it. Any kinds of activities on social apps, if you want to put it on chain, and then it has to be a transaction to be to be stored and to be recorded, right? So in in in, in DeFi, when you take out a loan or when you when you when you when you lend a loan to someone, and then you are actually making a transaction on chain. So the transactions on DeFi. It's actually generating zero bytes of new state data. So this is a thing that makes it different. And um, what, what it means by generating zero bytes of new data is that um, uh, what, it, what, it, what a smart uh, contract is doing is just updating the account balances of both sides. And there is no new data being appended to the chain, to the block. So just updating the account balances of both parties, and that's it. There is no new data, new state data. However, in social transactions, I just define like uh, maybe you like something, you you comment on something, and um, it's actually going to cause some um, memory because you need new data to to be appended to the block. You, uh, the, this data need to be stored, indexed, and queried, and it's actually taking up spaces, right? So, uh, um. Now we know that uh, DeFi transactions are actually different uh, uh, than social transactions. So what what why is it important is that it's come to uh, it comes to a problem of storage. Uh, we'll talk about storage problem later on, but let's, let's focus on uh, the 
the, the storage limitations of all general purpose blockchains today. So these uh, blockchains actually cause um, are cost are expensive to store to, to store data, right? So you, if you look at the, um, the the picture on the left bottom, and then we have Diesel allowing uh, storing one gigabyte of on chain state, one gigabyte it only costs eighty dollars, right? But for Cardano it costs around seven hundred thousand, and for Avalanche it's almost a million, as for Solana it's one point three million. And for Ethereum is 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 even unimaginable. It's actually 400, 400 million, and, and it's quite actually very expensive. We can actually encourage people to use um to use the web free social applications if whatever if the activities they do, for example, if I like a button and it's actually causing me one door and I wouldn't like to use it, why not just use Instagram instead, right? Because it's, it's actually unreasonable for me to use the applications and to pay for for every button I like or for every every comment I post. And I think that's actually a big problem. We, we can't charge users like that. So we have to think about this. Storage is a problem when it comes to social media. We have to lower the cost for people to, 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 to use the applications. Um, it's actually... Uh, uh, it's important to scale to handle storage happy, uh, heavy applications like uh, social applications and also marketplaces. So these are actually, you know, they they have a mission to solve this problem, and they actually compare this storage problem with other uh, um, other blockchains which which aim as you know they serve uh, storage purposes. For example, Arweave or Filecoin. Um, they actually course uh, they actually uh they ought actually course around you know 10 cents to one dollar which is prohibitively expensive according to diesel and this course are likely to go up even more as these chains become more popular because they they were not designed to scale state storage they are offering storage solutions but they are not designed to scale state storage and that's you know two things two concepts so uh, we have to think about um, because, uh, just think about how many people are using Twitter today. So uh, we are we are actually having a lot of activities on Twitter on any social popular social media out there. There are a lot of transactions per second going on, right? So we can we, we can just you know store everything on chain and you know charging users uh, for you know having these kinds of transactions, and that's not very economically incentive. So the conclusion is that uh, these are things that today's more advanced blockchains, they fail completely at handling the social type transactions. And this limitation is actually blocking the development of uh, of um, most interesting web-free applications. For example, they, they have um, maybe the, 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 the Twitter version, the social media apps on web-free, they are actually hindering the development of this development uh, of this ecosystem. And then uh, there's another concept that I would like to explain is that uh, finite state and infinite state applications. So I just mentioned that uh, you know uh, taking DeFi as an example, I, I just mentioned that the transactions uh, performed in DeFi are actually uh, state neutral transactions, meaning that. They only simply uh, simply modify existing balances, account balances, rather than append new data to the state. For example, if I transact, if I give Dave 10, 10 bucks, and then what I what what the tra what the blockchain does is actually to ver verify the transaction by you know checking my balances. Oh, Johnny minus ten, and then Dave plus ten, and that's it. No new data, just update account balances. That's it. Okay, so that's state neutral transactions by definition. Okay, and then. Um, uh, as for social transactions, it's actually not the same. I just explained, right? Because we have to append a new state. For example, I like the button, I post something, I update my profile picture, and then there are new new things, right? To be stored on chain. And that's different type of transactions. And we call uh, the the traditional, I, I would say, um, the, DeFi the DeFi transactions as uh, finite state applications. Because uh, the applications, uh, the data is finite, right? Because we don't have new data to append on, you know, 
the 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 the, the chain apart from you know just validating transactions and also checking account balances and that's it, right? And users could transfer funds between each other millions of times, just like I I can I can you know me and Dave can do a lot of transactions, but you know what a chain what the blockchain does is just you know verifying the validating transactions and also um updating balances of my balance and also Dave's balance and that's it, okay? So uh when it comes to social media transaction that's another thing okay that's infinite state transaction what is infinite state transaction infinite state applications and our, our transactions are actually uh we need to grow our data we need to grow the storage for storing our data because um think about it uh consider a typical social app um we can create new profiles it actually adds new state, right? We make a post, we comment something, we like something, and then it adds a new state. And all these things are actually state augmenting rather than state neutral. Uh, I just explained with the case of DeFi. And with social apps, instead of just, you know, checking a few account balances in my state, we need to be able to store uh, an indefinite amount of data, or even worse, uh, this state needs to be frequently queried by other users on the network, requiring it to be highly available. What it means is that we have to, you know, sometimes we check up on other people's um, profile. For example, I, 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 I want to check Dave's Twitter and I press and I want to check something and that's actually queries. And that actually queries are actually causing a lot of, you know, computation on the network. And, that, and that's actually a problem which uh, Bezo is actually trying to, you know, to solve. So, and, and another conclusion is that uh, Bezo mentioned that it's unfortunate that many applications we use today, uh, including most social apps and marketplaces, are like this. And, and that uh, Bezo is actually trying to, you know, allow the development of infinite state applications being built on diesel and that's you know uh the thing that uh is different than the state augmenting transactions in the case of DeFi. yeah so um i just you know explained a few um i i would say a little bit complicated or complex concepts and um yeah let's see dave do you have any you know opinion or anything you want to discuss regarding uh smart contracts versus smart surface and also storage course problem and also different kinds of transactions uh, state. What do you think about it, Dave? Um, I think uh, diesel is generally a, a great protocol for, uh, you know, a referee, you know, uh, um, in token, if, you know, it's going to be a bull case for the whole market, I think the social fire is going to, you know, pump as a whole. But I think, uh, as a, a, you know, sort of like a referee analyst here in Hobby, I also, uh, want to point out the importance of storage in this protocol. It's like, um, you no, know, the storage, you know, function is basically the soul of this the diesel protocol. So basically, um, what it means, it means that, um, you know, it addresses the diesel white paper, you know, addresses a lot on storage, like, you know, what's the, you know, problem statement? It's basically like, you know, uh, the blockchain that, you know, does not, you know, function to store on chain, you know, data or queries or indexes or, you know, stuff, uh, they, you know, uh, require, you know, off-chain computing, off-chain, um, sort of like, um, um, you know, storage. So, um, it has to, uh, you know, uh, develop a new mechanism, a new network or a new function to, you know, more every data or to, or to store every data. You know, on chain. So basically, right now we have a lot of great, you know, protocol like you know, like Filecoin is uh, the uh, proof of storage, proof of, proof of space time, and a lot of great stuff. So Aviv is Spora, you know, you know, a nice sustaining you know, proof of, you know, random access is like a proof of work, um, you know, consensus. So basically, when we you know get back to diesel uh, on the white paper, so basically we do not see you know a um very addressed point that how storage is going to be managed managed you know um across the protocol 
So um, what is the you know consensus algorithm or the consensus method of the storage? Um, basically, we do not have a you know very deep understanding, or the white paper is not telling us or is not feeding us enough that we also want to know how you know this data is going to be you know effectively stored. And uh, you know, an archive, you know, with privacy protection, and then you know, um, you know, we can access back to our stored data, stored files easily. So that's the um, you know, the issue I'm concerned about. So basically, what I think of about diesel is uh, like um, since it's transitioning to like proof of stake, you know, partially, you know, until you know a complete transition, uh, I guess. So I think um, the validators are going to be, you know, the the people or the acts that are going to store there. So um, the privacy and also the security of the whole network is going to be highly dependent on of these validators. So um, so the the you know sort of like the honesty or integrity of these validators are very important. So that in case of any malicious activities happen on the network. So we have to assure that the validators are going to ban, you know, ban or take actions against these malicious activities, like, um, you know, deleting the storage data or deleting the, you know, uh, sort of like the, uh, or censoring, even censoring the, you know, store files or the queries, the, you know, the, the, you know, um, you know, request on the access of the files. So, um, if, you know, uh, we, you know, dep highly dependent on the, um, you know, um, validators. So it, it basically, you know, goes back to the web two problems that, um, if there is any single point of failure or if, you know, the, you know, the current party of storing our data, these, these kind of parties are going to, uh, you know, sort of like protect our privacy or not or like Web2 version of Web3, I still have, um, you know, little idea on that. Although I think they are, you know, building a, you know, stuff on, you know, Medium, also their, you know, on their blockchain and stuff, but I still want to wait to see, you know, how things go out. Um, you know, um, so I think there is a great probability of, you know, Diesel is going to be, uh, you know, built out in a, in a bright future. So I think like, um, you know, previously we tend to see a, you know, a, you know, first, you know, um, you know, uh, one million, you know, investment fund back in November 2021 from now, from Octane Fund. So we also see the, um, you know, the Octane Fund, you know, had a, um, no 15 million, you know, as a seed round, seed round investment. You know, to fill the decentralized, you know, social ecosystem back in you know, when November 2, uh, 2021, you know. So I think with the seed round and also the, you know, investment round, so I think, uh, you know, they are, you know, uh, well financial or financialized to support the uh, you know, developers and development with the uh, great roadmap. So uh, we are going to see or we are going to wait to see their due diligence on the development. Yeah, so that's basically my opinion. Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned something. Uh, 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 I want. I also want to address this. So, uh, you you just mentioned that um, the blockchain um, methodology and also the, the the thing that how they they handle the data is not actually very transparent, right? And and that you know uh, raises a you know a a, a, a centralization problem to you, right? I, I partially agree on that because. Uh, back to the white paper of diesel and uh, we can see that the basics about blockchain data uh, deployed by diesel is actually under construction so it's actually modified last modified eight months ago so a little bit suspicious and uh, if they are going to update this and you know to let, let us know how uh, the data are being handled on the diesel blockchain and that would be awesome uh, i would also like to learn more about you know the blockchain data of diesel yeah another thing that um also is uh is also important is that uh let's get back to uh the scale uh the proof of stake thing so today it says diesel runs a hybrid of proof of work consensus mechanism that allows to use far less energy than bitcoin and Ethereum. hybrid proof of work and that's um i'm actually a little bit confused because 
they are saying that they are trying to you know propose a proof of stake transition in the coming weeks and that they expect to launch before the year the end of the year 2022 and now we are moving in the last quarter of 2022 and you know probably we are going to you know stay tuned to uh the development of diesel and if there's any update i'll update you guys so right now two things to update first of all, first of all the proof of stake the transition to proof of stake and also the blockchain data these two things um i would like to see more information right to learn more about the project but overall i think they have a good mission and they actually have are trying to achieve uh, they are trying to solve some <clears throat> some problem which actually are important to be solved right so uh last but not least uh we have a quick news update because it's actually quite important and south core uh, that, that the news is south uh, we, we already remember this face right it's still coin south Korea six the rest of terraform labs one and dual one a court in south Korea uh, issued an arrest warrant for dual uh who is the founder of the terraform labs so the lunar and terror the, the boss of lunar and terror uh who's 40 billion wipe out earlier this year sparked the global crypto rot so this guy liquidated a lot of us right <laughs> So the court in Seoul's issued a warrant for Do Kwan and five others. According to a test matrix from the prosecutor's office, a local newspaper earlier reported that the warrant was related to a violation of capital market rules. So Do Kwan was in uh, was charged for violating uh the capital market rules in Korea. And the unraveling of the Terraform uh, platform may include the collapse of Terror USD stablecoin, the collapse of UST, uh shaking the faith of digital asset sector, so we no longer believe uh any algorithmic stable coin we have fear right and yet to recover as much of losses and we're we're entering the bear market probably a part of that is due to do coin <laughs> just kidding right and yeah uh lastly i would have the candy drop event so i i saw some comments and some people already you know uh the airdrop and uh, I, I just repeat the rules so that you can you guys can participate so make sure you get on your hobby apps and you trade uh to earn some crystals and you can spend the crystals to join the candy drop event Tra the candy drop events uh the candy drop tokens will be randomly distributed to registered participants and will be del delivered within 12 hours so five lucky stories will be awarded with special airdrop worth of 100 usd so make sure you trade enough to learn to earn 30 crystals and join the airdrop event. And the lucky star will be notified via SMS. And yeah, make sure you join the Kenny Drop event. And thank you for listening today. We covered a lot about um, Diesel and there are some um, complicated concepts. I encourage, I highly encourage you guys if you're interested in learning how uh, smart services work and also how they handle how they solve the problem between uh finite state to infinite state applications you can actually go to their white paper to see a more thorough and complete explanation on these concepts that's pretty interesting because um i think in the bear market we are we are seeing uh, a lot of you know potential protocols building under the bear market and when boo comes back they are going they are going to thrive right and we are actually in a bear market it's the best time to build and it's the best time to connect so make sure you stay tuned to the uh, weekly market chat and also to hobby research keep yourself learning never stop because uh knowledge gives you a lot of things right you benefit a lot from you know learning 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 new things in crypto and you know i'll be you know I'll be happy to you know cover more interesting topics with you guys to discover more and explore more so a lot of, uh, again thank you for listening and yeah make sure you check out the 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 research um published by me and dave about the bitcoin versus inverted rlp reverse repo user to 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 forecast the price of bitcoin the article check it out it's actually helpful monitor the the level of reverse repo that'd be helpful so thank you guys for listening. Yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye, guys.